It's four days before the big release. The Swatch Company, which owns both Swatch the Watch Company and Blancpain the Watch Company, is forcing a collaboration of the two companies and, well, it released early. Whether it was an intentional release or if it was a leak, we now have all the information about these new watches. And I've got to be honest, some of them are actually a little bit exciting. Some of them are not. So let's talk about it. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And today, we're kind of looking into something that I don't usually do, but this story is so big and there's so many implications to this story, even though it's not usually my thing that I cover, I just think I had to. And that's what Swatch has done with its you know, family of watches, the Swatch Company and the Blancpain Watch Company. They've made a collaboration, which they've been hinting at all week, and they finally, some of the, the actual stuff has come out. Initially, I was kind of interested because a whole bunch of other outside companies and groups were making their predictions of what this watch would look like. I mean, we didn't even really know it was going to be based on the 50 Fathoms, except that, you know, I mean, what else is it going to be based on? But some of their uh, renderings are pretty cool. Some of them I actually liked a lot. Then we actually got the real release today. And I mean, I've got to be honest, it's better than I was expecting. You know, it's got a couple things that I think are definitely going to be negatives and we'll kind of get into that. But the general story is just like the moon swatch, which uh, as you can see, I've got a couple of, you know, this is a swatch watch, which is, you know, not a high end watch. You know, usually they're made out of plastics. This one's made out of bioceramic, which is, you know, a form of a plastic. And, you know, they've got a relatively inexpensive movement in them. And, you know, swatch is branching out by pretty much broadening their range, introducing some of their higher end companies. And a couple years ago, they did it with Omega, with the moon swatch. And, you know, it was an amazing experience. Swatch has probably never gotten the kind of rushing at the doors that they got back then. You know, it was boutique only and it was only at certain boutiques, so there was definitely some things that Swatch did wrong. But all in all, I mean, it was a pretty interesting release and it was insanely popular. And, you know, you still can't get them very readily today. And that's going to be part of the issue we'll talk about. But unlike Omega, which is a pretty well-known brand, now Swatch is doing it again with a pretty unknown brand. Unless you're a big watch nerd like me and hopefully most of my followers, you know, you might not even know what the Blancpain is. And you know, it's a dive watch company. Their biggest watch is the 50 Fathoms. It's kind of famous in a way. It's fighting with the Submariner for being the first real dive watch. I think most watch connoisseurs probably say that it actually is the first dive watch. Sorry, Rolex. And, you know, it's a beautiful watch. It's come in many forms and, you know, it's popular amongst people who like that kind of watch. The bad thing about it, though, is, you know, it's pretty darn expensive. I've got my eyes on a couple that I've enjoyed seeing but you know they they're up in the twelve to fifteen thousand dollar range, and you know that's kind of a lot of money for a dive watch. So the amazing thing about this collaboration is we're finally going to bring some of the haute horology that is Blancpain and bring it down to the level of the Swatch crowd, and that's kind of neat. I don't know if it's going to be as popular as that would be for the Omega because, as I said, most of you know the Swatch group doesn't really know what Blancpain is. But after I think they see these watches, I think they're, they're resting more on the quality of the watch than they are on the quality of the branding. Like the Omega Moon Swatch, I mean, it's, it's a pretty junky watch. I mean, is it fun? Yes. Is it a good watch? Not a bit. It's just a cheap mechanical quartz. There's plenty of uh, YouTubers out there who, you know, have bought them and have reported how things have just fallen apart on them. You know, they're not overly great watches. They're not overly well made. You know, I've had no problems with mine besides taking it off of the ridiculously ugly strap that it comes on. You know, they're, they're pretty okay watches. 
The difference with this new watch, you know, it's actually a pretty nice watch. Some of the features that I'll just list off the top of my head here, you know, it's an automatic. So Swatch Group does make their own automatic movement called the System 51. And it is a completely computerized made automatic movement. So no human hands touch it. You know, that's good and bad. I mean, it's a very reliable system and you know, it, it's just not gonna have any man-made errors in it. So, you know, it's probably a pretty functional and strong movement, but uh, you know, it's got a 90 hour power reserve, which is pretty amazing. And you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting feature. You know, it's got an exhibition case back. You know, the watch itself is made out of that bioceramic material again. So whether that's good or bad, I can't really tell you, but you know, that's kind of their, their thing now. They're using a bit of some reclaimed materials. You know, it comes on a somewhat NATO looking strap, even though I don't think it's a real NATO because it doesn't cover up the back of the case, which is nice. You know, I'm not a big fan of NATOs, but I far prefer that NATO strap over the piece of garbage that came on the moon swatch. And, you know, besides that, you know, it's, it's a pretty good looking watch. It's got a date on some of them. It's got Fume dials. I mean, it's, it's actually a pretty neat watch. And let's go into each of them and just See what we can tell you about it. So quick little piece of bookkeeping here. I forgot to mention, there's five versions of this watch. And just like the Moon's watch had one for all the planets in the solar system, this version of the Blanc Pond swatch has five versions for the five oceans. So we've got one for the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic, and the Antarctic Ocean. And each of these watches is based on a this is gonna be a word that's gonna get everybody, but a mollusk that is located in each of these areas. This is gonna become the most Googled word this week. It's called a nudibranch, and it's a mollusk. It's a slug-like creature, and I guess each of these regions at least has somewhat of an indigenous version, and they base the color schemes for the watch on these animals. And some of these animals are not well-colored, and I think that's gonna hurt their watch. But I'm gonna tell you my favorite one first, and that's the Atlantic Ocean. So the Atlantic Ocean is the blue version, and it's got a blue Fume dial. It's got a date, which I kinda of wish it didn't, it sort of breaks up the, the beauty of it to me. But you know, all in all, I think this one matched with its strap is just a really beautiful watch. And I, I've got one other thing to mention that I kinda of didn't when I quickly talked about the specs. It's actually a dive watch. So based on the 50 Fathoms, this watch is actually water resistant to 50 fathoms, which is about nine bar. So you could actually go swimming, diving with this watch. And the other thing is it has loom. So I, it really is a dive watch, which I really wasn't expecting that. So I gotta give props to Swatch or maybe props to Blanc Pond for forcing Swatch to make this into somewhat of a real watch. So I would feel a lot more comfortable wearing this watch to work where I have to wash hands and you know do things with water than I would with my moon swatch. So as I said, I really think this is a, a bonus that this version has. But the Atlantic is by far my favorite. My second favorite is the Antarctic. And it might even be tied for first place, but the color is just not perfect. So the Antarctic actually reminds me of what you would think an Antarctic watch would be. It's palette of white and gray. But what I really like about this watch is they've made a nod to one of the vintage Blanc Ponds, which is having a moisture indicator. I don't think this is a functional moisture indicator, but it's got the, the design and style of it. And that's that little uh, circle down at the six o'clock position. And, you know, I said, just for people who like the Blanc Pond and particularly who like the more vintage versions of the Blanc Pond, I think this is a nice nod to that. And, you know, this color scheme I think is great. My very distant third choice is the Arctic Ocean. And this is where I get a little bit odd. I mean, Arctic doesn't make me think orange, but this is their orange version. And you know, the orange is actually pretty okay. It's just a little too much orange. So I can't say I love it, but I can't say I hate it. But similarly to making a nod to vintage, this watch has the no radiation symbol on it. And obviously this watch doesn't have radiation, so I guess that actually is true. But you know, this is a great vintage nod. I think the color isn't too bad. Maybe if you can get an aftermarket strap for it, you might be able to tone this one down a bit. But you know, it's, 
it's nice, but it's not my favorite. I kind of wish they did that dial on a version of the watch that looked a little bit different. It's really tough to choose between my fourth and fifth place winner, or maybe loser, but the fourth place win is gonna to go to the Pacific Ocean. And once again, I just, it's the color. So they gave it a yellow color and it has an even weirder black Fume dial. It just, it just doesn't work for me. And you know, I'm not really sure what they're going for. I just think it's kind of the unattractive one of the bunch. It's not great, but it's not ugly. Don't worry, we're saving ugly for fifth but it's just not a good looking watch. So sorry to the Pacific Ocean and the billions of people who live on the Pacific Ocean, you didn't get a great example. And easily the ugliest of the bunch is the Indian Ocean. So it's green and it's got a black fume portion to it and it's got a strap that just looks like it's at a reggae festival. So it's just ugly and I don't think I can say much else about it. So in the grand scheme of, you know, the hierarchy of best, you know, I think that blue is going to be very popular. I think the the white or the gray is going to be, you know, relatively popular. And, you know, there's probably going to be some people who like the yellow and, you know, I, I'm not so sure how many are going to love the green, but uh, I think those are going to be the low ones. And I think the orange similarly will be a little bit popular just because it's got that no rad. But uh, all in all, I mean, I, I think, you know, the one or two that I really like are very nice watches. So here's where the rub comes in. These are priced at $400. <sighs> that's a tough one because I can't say that's bad, but I can't say it's good either. So if you remember these moon swatches, they cost about $260. And I mean, they truly are junky. I mean, you're paying for the Omega collaboration in the name. And, you know, Blanc Pan is a more expensive, more prestigious brand. So I was expecting it to be greater than 260. But once you get over a certain threshold, I think you start to get in dangerous territory of what somebody's willing to spend. And I think they chose well, where I don't think 400 is going to scare off too many people, but it's just high enough that, I mean, if, if I was to be a normal person, not a weirdo watch collector, you know, $400 for a watch is a lot of money for a watch. You know, I, I get completely spoiled in the thought of stuff that I've bought and, you know, that's not normal. So how many normal people are going to buy this watch? I don't know. I don't think a lot. I do think collectors and people who just like it, you know, I think they will. So I think that market's going to be solid, but not super solid. But here's where probably the interesting next month is going to be. I think the flippers are going to go crazy because of the moon swatch debacle. So I, I work this weekend. I will not be sitting outside a swatch store ready to collect my swatch but I bet you there's going to be lines around every building and hopefully the Swatch company has prepared for this a little better than they did for the Moon Swatch because if they open the doors and say, hi, we've got 10 of each, have a nice day, you know, there's going to be violence in the streets like there was for the Moon Swatch. Hopefully, you know, they've got enough stock that, you know, the grand majority of people who show up on day one can get their watch. And then of course, check eBay. How many people are going to be flipping these things and, you know, is that price going to stick? Obviously when the Moon Swatch first released, you know, people were selling them for three, four, maybe five times. You know, right now they still go for a bit of a premium. I think each of my Moon Swatches sells for about $100 more than you can buy it in the store. But I don't think Blanc Pond pretty much is going to have that kind of long-lasting effect because I just don't think the brand is as strong, at least for regular folk. The other encouraging issue that I've noticed, at least from people I've heard from, is that I think this is going to be a bit more available in stores because there is a Swatch store local to me and they didn't have the Moon Swatch. And from what I hear, you know, they are going to carry the Blanc Pan. So maybe you don't have to go to such an exclusive shop like you did for the Moon Swatch. 
because I was only able to pick mine up when we went on trips to New York and Las Vegas because only the big cities had them. And you know, I don't think that's gonna be the case for this. So that obviously will also help the distribution of this new watch. So a quick wrap up. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with what I see so far. So the two versions that I like, I actually like. And are they worth $400? Oh, the judge is still out on that one. So, you know, I I might have to see it before I think it's worth putting money down for it. I've already got, you know, two plastic watches over here. Maybe if I unloaded those, that would motivate me more to buy a, a Blanc Pond version. But all in all, you know, the price isn't out of bounds. And the quality of the product you get, I, I think it's better than I really would have thought it would have been. You know, I said automatic movement, glass crystals, exhibition in front. It's got loom, it's water resistant. I mean, it's it's a pretty decent watch. You know, I don't know how rugged that uh, System 51 version is in terms of, you know, are you gonna be able to do sports and stuff with it? But, you know, it's, it's not a bad movement. They've had it for years and years, so I'm assuming it's relatively tried and true. So advantages, I, I think it looks good, I think it's priced decent, and I think it's got pretty good tech and spec. Disadvantage, kind of the price is still in that ambiguous zone. You know, it's more than I think what most people would consider a cheap watch. And, you know, the big, big advantage is just a couple of them are really ugly. And so, you know, what, what do you do about that? You know, just hopefully, all the good colors don't sell out and you walk into the store and the only ones they've got are the ugly colors. But it turns out for the Moon Swatch, you know, I don't think any of them were as ugly as some of these uglies are, but you know, it, it didn't work that way. I mean, they either had some or they didn't. So I guess even the ugly watches sell. And I'm not sure if that's because their opinion is different from mine or if it's that hype situation we were talking about earlier where Right now, these watches, they sell for a little bit of a premium. So time will tell. But thanks for joining me on this journey where we could talk about the new release of the Blanc Pond Swatch collaboration. And let me know in the comments if this is something you're interested in. Or tell me what you like or what you dislike about the watch. I'm just generally curious what people think about it. And on a final note, I'm getting close to 10,000 subscribers. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed and you like the content and you just want to see more of it, please, please subscribe. It really helps the numbers and it just helps the channel grow. And in terms of that, I also have, you know, a membership on my YouTube. I've got a Patreon. You know, I've got an Instagram that I don't do very much on, but I try. So if there's anything or anywhere you want to follow me a little bit more, that would be great. And if you have any questions or comments about anything else watch related, my email's in the description. I virtually answer everything. So, you know, thanks for being a part of this and uh, let me know if you need anything. And thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you next week in a new one. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to Pocket Watch Time. I have lots of reviews on watches and on pocket watches. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below.